dear saints, how are you? Before we go into, into our reading of the word of God, allow me to say something on a very humble note. I'm humbly requesting that the program coordinators kindly keep time. Because you have given us a schedule saying from this time to this time, this one, from this time to this time, this one. I have said so because sometime in the, in the course of um, the opportunity God gave me to serve, I served in a, a section for 10 years that we were working with deadlines. So you are given an assignment and you are told by this time it has to be ready. If not, it will be a problem. For example, when I worked in the translation section, which also does with deadlines, uh, by now, this is um, third, is it third quarter or second quarter? Third quarter. By now, this is August, the assignments I were given, the lesson for fourth quarter 2024 must be ready by end of uh, August 30th. So it is that way my mind was tuned, even at home. My wife knows, Namuambia nitaenda safari na nitatoka sahi. So she, she understands all over. Even my children, when we say we are meeting at what time? We are meeting at four. Unasikia wanapigiana simu. Unachua Buddha and I keep time. Sijui maana ya Buddha ndikuja kuambiwa na manisha dati. So I said it on a very humble note. Because by giving us that schedule, there's some of us here who already have been have been invited for certain assignments. So they say, by five I will be there. But you see, by five is when we are beginning the sermon. Now, they are not there. Others went, because that's what they say. I'm sorry, Kuachakosa pastor. I won't come again, Kuachakosa. Moreover, I'm staff. Hakuna mali nitapatikana kucha kuchokosa. I was only saying, on a humble note, may the May the program coordinators kindly keep time on a very humble note. To wind up that one, I was, we were somewhere. The same problem was there. And the sermon was to end at 12.30. And the one who was making an announcement, he said, make sure you know our sermon is ending at 12.30. That much you know. By 12.30, they had not finished their logistics. So, the time I was told to stand, it was 12.40. So, as I stood, I told the congregation, shall we stand for benediction? That's basically what I could do. Because the sermon ended at 12.30. This other time belong to the members. You ask them permission to use their time. And there is not fair. Asante pastor kuniruhusu kujokosa watu wako. People all over the world treasure all kinds of things and items. Millions of money, millions of calories, millions of hours are spent every other day on what human beings treasure most. There are those who treasure pets like dogs and the cats, and in some families, dogs are fed much far better than their families. You hear a man traveling to London, he's on itinerary, he lands in London, and then he, he calls back home. Hey, Nani, instead of saying, I have safely arrived, the first question is, have you fed dogs? That's what you hear. 
because his interest is not even in the family, he treasures dogs. So he asks about the dogs. There are those who treasure farm animals like cows of different species, goats, sheep, and pigs. There are those who treasure birds, depending on which species. There are those who treasure wild animals, like many nations have preserved them, to serve as a source of revenue from tourists who come from different countries to admire, appreciate them and take pictures of them, and with them because they treasure these animals. Talk of every living and unliving creatures, they are treasured. The late, for those who remember her, the late Wangari Madai treasured the environment, trees and forests. The whole of her being was dedicated and committed in the conservation of the environment. And at one point she was ready to sacrifice her life because of the environment, because that was where our treasure was. There are those who treasure wealth in terms of how much money they have, the kind of houses they live in, the type of model of cars they drive, the estate where they reside. You know, some reside in Karen, some in Runda, some in Mudaiga, some other places. You hear someone attending church in New Life talking to a friend and asking, by the way, where do you attend church? And the friend says, Kangemi. Then you hear the New Life man saying, by the way, where is Kangemi? He said the one in this direction, but where is Kangemi? Seriously. So people treasure where they live. There are those who treasure their business, the kinds of investments they have put up. There are those who treasure women or young ladies for extramarital relationships. And those who treasure men and young men for the same. There are those who treasure their wives to an extent of making them idols of worship. You know these things, pastors. We have failed on this area totally. A guest, a cow meeting guest comes. And when introducing him, you hear something like this. The man of God I am going to bring to you, I am not worthy to introduce him. Man of God, forgive me where I may go wrong. So you hear, this man of God attended Korogocho Primary School. He went to Mukuru Kwanjenga for his secondary school. He went to Mukuru Kwa Reuben for his high school. Then he attended Kawangware uh, for his first degree. In his second degree, he went to Mathare North. And he started the degree, he has gone to uh, Imaradaima. He is now doing his fourth PhD. I, I said, I am not, I'm not worthy. Dear man of God, please stand. And the man of God stands. I'm so humbled for the kind introduction. You said that I have a wife, and for sure is there. And he says, babe, babe, stand up so that we may see you. Now you wonder, what is going on? I don't know. So, there are people who treasure their wives. There are those whose wives treasure their husbands to the same extent, making them idols of worship. There are parents who treasure their children to an extent of making them idols of worship. There are children who treasure their parents to almost worshiping them. Kenya guards the central bank more jealously. Why? Times Towers, the Amaris, the State House. Because that is where the treasure of the nation is. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This being the case on us human beings, what about God? Matthew 6, 6 verse 19, 21, the word of God says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in to steal. 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our someone this evening is entitled, Where is the treasure of God? Where is the treasure of God? Let us pray. A gracious Father in heaven, 
we thank you for this privilege you have given us to sit under your feet. On a very humble note, Lord, forgive us our sins. May the Holy Spirit guide our minds to understand this concept that it can help us in our journey heavenward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. During creation, as Christians, we believe that the world was created by God. Genesis 1, 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The whole of chapter 1, up to chapter 2, verses 1 to 3 of Genesis, it is the story about the creation of the world and all that is therein. What was God's view of creation after every stage? What was God's view? For example, Genesis 1:4, and God saw the light that it was very good. Verse 10, and God saw that it was very good. Verse 12, and God saw that it was very good. Verse 18, and God saw that it was very good. Verse 21, and God saw that it was very good. Verse 25, and God saw that it was very good. Verse 31, then God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. Man was created perfect in the image and the likeness of the creator. The servant of the Lord Ellen White says, everything that God had made was the perfection of beauty and nothing seemed one thing that could contribute to the happiness of the holy pair. Yet the creator gave them still another token of his love by preparing a garden especially for their home. Page 46 of Patrick's and the Prophets. God had put his treasure in place and particularly investing in human beings. Why? He created them in his own image and likeness. The order of God. In chapter 3 of Genesis, the order of God is altered. The plan of God for man and the rest of creation never went as it was intended. Genesis chapter 3 is the turning point. Verses 1 to 8 paint a very grim picture. The devil counters God's programs and tells man in Genesis 3, chapter 3 verse 4, you will not surely die. God had said in Genesis 2 verse 15, you shall surely die. But the devil using the same wording of God says you will not surely die. In Genesis 3 5, the devil tells man, you can eat of it. But God had said you shall not eat. The woman, that is Eve, bought Satan's merchandise of lies. So in Genesis 3, 6, the woman saw three things on this tree. One, the tree was very good for food. Two, the tree was very pleasant to the eyes. Three, the tree, the tree was desirable to make one wise. From what Eve saw in that tree, it has actually gone down the ages up to the time where we are. One, it was good for food. Ladies are very good at mamba ya chakula. Yes, there are men who are trying, but their taste is not to the ladies. The tree was pleasant to the eyes. That is why men are colorblind. Ladies are color sensitive. So dear men, don't buy your wife anything until you know her colors. One man told his wife, I am going to surprise you. So he went and purchased the bra, bra, yeah? you know what it is. Four of them red ones. So he brought them home and for sure she was surprised. She was shocked. <laughs> it was a shock. So she was asking him, if you brought only one color, so people will say, 
I have never changed them. There is only one. She never put them on. So he was asking, and those things I bought, I come and be in surprise. So I'm still in surprise. The moment I come out of it, I'll put them on. Dear men, don't simply bring anything that ni mekuletea utalete utaona kifa. You will never see her putting it on. When you ask her, like, she gave it to uh, to her aunt 40 years ago. Why? The tree was pleasant to the eyes. Remember, men, we have no version. If kama ni coat, if it is a coat, there are only three styles of a coat. It is either split twice at the back or once or made round like a glass. Kama kikombe. That is all. But for ladies, versions and versions and versions. That's why when you walk along the market, whatever shopping center, you leave her behind. Don't begin quarreling. Why have you left me? Why are you there? No. There is something she has seen. And she could like to have it in the house. Don't begin quarreling. Slow your legs, Pastor. Slow your legs. If you see her delay, looking somewhere, slow your legs and slow your mouth. <laughs> Don't begin saying anything. We have five senses, they have six. That's the thing. For men, we argue using the word of God and we misinterpret the scriptures. You know the Bible says, I am the head of the wife. And we stop there. As Christ is the head of the church. You may think you are a head of the family or a head of the wife, but you are a headache. And remember, a headache is supposed, a headache is supposed to be in the hospital for treatment. So, dear people of God, Let's get the right perspectives of things. However, the lady did not see death on the tree as earlier warned by God. The woman took three bold steps. One, she took the fruit, plucked it. Two, she ate. Three, she gave to her husband and he ate. Then if we were man enough, why did we eat? The action of her husband of eating the forbidden fruit was actually the last straw that broke the camel's back. Immediately the husband ate. At this point, the reality of God's earlier warnings dawned. Genesis 3, 7 brings out three dreadful things that happened. One, their eyes were opened. Two, they knew they are naked. And three, they sewed fig leaves to make themselves coverings. They had died, not physical death, but spiritually. Because spiritual death is worse than physical death. Spiritual death is to say goodbye to life eternal. And that is the death they died. They cannot now stand in the presence of a holy God, wild naked, they had to put the last nail on their spiritual coven. In Genesis 3, 8, they hid themselves from the presence of the God, of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Sin had landed in the world. The war that had started in heaven finally came to this world. Revelation 12, 7 to 9 says, And the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old, called the devil and the Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The earth now has Satan's undivided attention. Sin that originated in Satan, who was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and a father of it. Now sin had now been embraced by man, and when it was embraced, sin did three deadly things. 
One, it separated man from God. Two, it separated man from fellow man. Three, it separated man from the rest of creation. When Adam was asked, what have you done? Adam blamed God and said, were it not for you, God, this thing could not have happened. Why did you create a woman? The blame went to God. God so patient and so loving comes back. Eve, what did you do? The blame went to God again. You created the serpent. Why did you do that? And in that way, there was total separation all from there. So from here on, man treasured and invested heavily in sin. Treasuring in sin is like putting a cobra or a black mamba or a buff add on your chest. James 1.15, the Bible says, Then when, we, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is full grown, it brings forth death. So sin took toll on man. Servant of the Lord says, The bodies of human beings made for the dwelling place of God had become the habitation of demons. The senses, the nerves, the passions, the organs of men were worked by supernatural agencies in the indulgence of the vilest lust. The very stamp of demons was impressed upon the countenance of men. Human faces reflected the expressions of the legions of evil with which they were possessed. Sin had become a science, and the vice was consecrated as part of religion. Rebellion had struck deep into the heart, and the hostility of man was most violent against the heaven. Jeremiah says, 4.22, For my people are foolish, they have not known me. They are silly children, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. We have become wise in doing evil. Sin has now become a science. It was demonstrated before the universe that apart from God, humanity could not be uplifted. A new element of life must be imparted by him who made the world. So, as we have seen from the previous lessons from the last two days, God moves into action to redeem man. God did not sit and watch man perish in sin. He had created man in his own image and likeness. But what sin has done today, people of God, is that we are now creating God in our image and our likeness. as where we are. We have nothing to do with God. Leaving man to perish in sin was a concept of defeat that Satan has won and the God has lost. For that reason, had God left it that way, then it could have confirmed that the Satan has won and the God has lost. So God in the personality of his son Jesus Christ took steps to rescue man from eternal death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. By the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, Christ tested the death for each and every one of us. The cry of Jesus Christ on the cross, Eli, Eli, Lama Sapaktan, meaning, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This was the determinant point. Jesus be saved from the cross and we perish forever, or he dies on the cross and we be saved forever. It was a determining moment, a horrible determining moment. The thing is, on which side is going to, God going to be? Is he going to, to remove his son from the cross and we perish forever? Or he leaves him die on the cross and we be saved? But the father allowed the only son to take the fullest of man's punishment of death. In the hands of God, Jesus surrendered his field, his spirit, sorry. With a loud voice, he cried, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And finally, as we saw in another lesson, he said, it is finished, meaning 
What? The plan of salvation has been permanently sealed. The battle has been won. God's treasure has been, has been forever reclaimed. When Jesus said it is finished, he meant that the plan of salvation now has been permanently sealed. Whoever believes will never be lost, but will have eternal life. Because the devil has now been won. The great work of redemption has been accomplished. Satan has revealed himself as a murderer. And by the shedding of the blood of the Son of God, Satan uprooted himself from the sympathies of the heavenly beings. The last link of sympathy between Satan and the heavenly world was broken. It meant that God's law is not changeable. Christ's death on the cross met the demands of the law, of a righteous life, a perfect character in his personality, who was tempted in all points but without sin, Hebrews 4.15. It is a declaration that man is now forgiven of his sin and saved to the uttermost. It was a declaration that man created in the image and the likeness of God has now become once more and forever the treasure of God. Man, it, has, it is a declaration that God has become just by punishing the sin of man in his son Jesus Christ, Hebrews 2.9. Thus the very righteousness of the law is now fulfilled in the believer in Christ. So that God can be just and justifier of him who believes in Jesus Christ. Man has now been forever bought by the precious blood of God's son Jesus Christ. Not to be treated as any common commodity, but now as a valuable treasure before the presence of God eternally. So now, we come to the focus. Where is the treasure of God? Exodus 19 verse 5. The Bible says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for the earth is mine. Because of the sacrifice of his son on the cross, we who had been thrown, who had been claimed by the devil, saying, Humanity is my treasure. By God allowing his son to cry on the cross and die there, he also demonstrated that the kingdom has been now removed from the devil and has come back into the hands of God. And the man is now forever secure in the hands of God because now man is now the treasure of God even much more. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 20, the Bible says, but, for, but the Lord has taken you and brought you out of, out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be his people and inheritance as you are this day. Now we are God's inheritance. While we inherit eternal life, which belongs to God, on the side of God, we are the inheritance of God. In that way, the devil has no claim on us if we cling to our God because we are his treasure. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, the, Bible, the, word, the word of God says, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people to himself, a special treasure above all the people on the face of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9 and 10. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in a waste land, a hallowing wilderness. He encycled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. That statement is in also, let me read it, in Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2, or Zechariah chapter 2, and the verses 8. This is what it says. For thy says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which blunder you. For he who touches you 
touches the apple of his eye. People of God, I wish we could understand where God has moved us from and where he has placed us. I am not a medic myself. But I hear that there is something called an apple in the eye. I don't know where it is. I was not good in those things, science, mathematics. When Mwalimu was teaching mathematics to me, that was rumors. So I could hear rumors, this one equals to this, this one equals to this. Therefore, that was rumors to me. So, there is what is called the apple of the eye. Probably, it is the one which enables us to see. So, God is saying, anyone who touches these people, I have redeemed through the blood of my only son, Jesus Christ, is touching the apple of my eye. You can imagine how jealous God is to whoever touches us. If only we reside on his side. Psalm 28 verse 9, the Bible says, Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Psalm 94 verse 14, the Bible says, For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance. We are the inheritance of God. The treasure of God is us. And the us is where his heart is. Look at yourself, the way you are, the life you have lived, or are living. However sinful you are, however poor you are, however despised you are, however dejected you are, however segregated you are, however forgotten you are, however dirty you are, however unlearned you are, however looked down upon you are as useless, helpless, worthless, hopeless, that cry of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that statement, it is finished, have made you and I the treasure of God forever. And therefore, the heart of God is in you, is in me, for we are the treasure of God. The treasure of God is not tithes and offerings. No, no, no. The treasure of God is you and I. He has bought us not with silver, not with gold, by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. The song, I'm so glad that our father in heaven, by Philip's bliss, the refrain section of it says, I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, even me. That part is what I wanted. I am so glad Jesus loves me, but even me. Look at how you are. Look at how you look. Look at how people treat you. Don't wash. Don't worry. You may have no scent in the pocket. Don't worry. People may be saying, hey, madam, you still have Mulika Mwizi. Don't worry. Don't worry. At least it is much far better because in a Mulika Mwizi, a own way, Mwizi at a rocket. So that's the best one. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter. You put on one dress every day. That's okay. At least you are not naked. Don't worry about what people say. People say, at the well, you look like this. Uh-uh. Let that not worry you. The writer is saying, I'm so glad Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Even me, however dirty I am. 
Don't worry, you have no fridge at home. Don't worry, you have no freeze at home. Don't worry, you have all those things at home. Why don't worry of anything? Because using the three stones, you still cook the same food, you eat, you get full, you sleep, the same sleep. Those who, who have don't sleep, they are on B on medicine. Wananda wanapewa madawa ya kulala. So you find a lady here. What is it, mommy? You know my husband has not, does not sleep. What is it? Some trailers are in Mombasa, some trailers are in Uganda, others are in Rwanda, others have gone to Zambia. He hears one trailer is stuck in the southern part of Zambia. He can't sleep. He comes to church, he does not enter in church. He's out there following his trailer. Have you ever seen how those people you call house servants, how deep they sleep? Those ones who milk your cows, if your cows are stolen the following day, they go another home, they begin milking. They are not crying. Is you crying? His cows have not been stolen. They are yours that have been stolen. When we understand that we are the treasure of God, what else do you want? If God owns us. Don't worry about what people are saying. That is none of your business. It is not your wallet or bank account that he loves. Some do not have. It is not your academic state that he loves. Some do not have. You know we have made academic attainments today as another God. I don't know whether I told you here. Today, people we make parties, we squander money to kill God's books for someone who has attained a PhD. And I told you the other day that you see Okusoma, she umefanya BA, na umefanya MA. Sasa A ume repeat mara mbili. Soso ni B na A na M. Umefanya PH na D. Si hizo sasa ni 6. Na 20 ziko, 5 vowels plus 21 consonants. Umefanya sita, ujafanya K, ujafanya G, ujafanya Z, ujafanya L, ujafanya M, ujafanya N, ujafanya H, ujafanya I. So umesoma wapi? <laughs> Dear people of God, I am not against it. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying... What God has given us, let us give glory and honor to God and not to mankind. Have you seen even elders? Once has been ordained an elder. A wonderful party is organized. What is it for? Oh, you know, Pastor, uh, Muse has been counting Sadaka for many years. Mungwali to Anikania. So now he has been given promoted is now an elder pastor. So we are going to thank God. People eating chicken because your man has been ordained as an elder. Ah, no! You find the whole Kijiji, the whole community. Where are you going? That's why the soul's husband was ordained elder. So that's where we are going. To do what? And there is a part organized at Hilton Hotel. Thank the heavens Hilton was closer here, so I don't know. It doesn't matter what, it is not your academic status that he loves. Some do not have. It is not your flats, not your bungalows, not your mansions that God loves. Some don't have. It is not your whatever model car you drive, he loves. Some do not have. It is not whatever make or version you put on that he loves. Some do not have. It is not your fame, your status, your reputation that he loves. Some do not have. It is you and I that he loves. He has made us his treasure, irrespective of circumstances. He has made us his treasure, irrespective of situations, irrespective of conditions, irrespective of society in society, in status in society, not by means of gold or silver. Knowing that, you were not redeemed with the corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. 
But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. First Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19. We were not redeemed with corruptible things. There are some of us people in this church of God, dear saints, who think that redemption is bought by the money they bring. And very unfortunately, people of God, we have gone to that, uh, uh, that kind of life. What am I saying? One of us, a brother, may bring 300,000 in the month of March as an offering. He becomes a salmon. Every Sabbath, you know, brother so-and-so, he has helped us a lot. He gave us 300,000. Brother so-and-so, stand up and greet us. He is not bad. Every other Sabbath, brother so-and-so, stand up and greet us. Every other Sabbath, and then somewhere in September, he brings another 100,000. When we come to elections in the month of October, we want someone here. Oh, so-and-so, that brother, so oh, Vila Kupingwa. No question. Where do you get all these things? The question is, for the, the 10 months, who is running the church? Who is running it? Let's get it clear, people of God. For the 10 months, he is not bringing the Omena women. They sell the Omena from Friday. I mean from Sunday to Friday. At the end of Friday, they calculate their profit. They find a mepata, 10 shillings come a profit. So one shilling, very early in the morning, Sabbath, and I end up with treasure privately, shilling yaka natoa, every Sabbath. These are the people running this church, dear pastor. It is not the people on the wall. It is the people on the floor who are running this church for 10 months. Because the brother is waiting another time for another 200, then he will be the song. He becomes like a national anthem in the church. Where is the treasure of God? It is not in what we have attained. It is not in what you have. Some don't have. It is we who are the treasure of God. So where is the heart of God? The heart of God is in us. Because we are his treasure. The verse said, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So where is the treasure of God? You are the treasure of God. Therefore, that is where the heart of God is. In all of us. Francis Ridley Havawal, in Psalm 281, shall say the following. I gave my life for thee. My precious blood I shed That thou my see And quicken from the dead I gave, I gave my life for thee What hast thou given for The song is simply saying, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. As he gave all his heart, all his life for your sake, he is in return asking for the whole of our hearts, our whole lives, so that he can seal them as his treasure forever. So that now, even amidst the calamities and the pandemics of all sorts, we can without fear join the apostle Paul by saying, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Christ's death and the resurrection has made us to be his inheritance, his treasure, the inheritance, the treasure of his sons and daughters. And in return, our Lord is our inheritance, is our treasure. Psalm 119, verse 5, 7. You are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I could keep your words. Where is the treasure of God? You are the treasure of God. I am the treasure of God. For where the treasure of God is, there his heart will be also. He guards us as the apple of his own eye. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, the Bible says, 
Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undivided, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Where is the treasure of God? You and I are the treasure of God. Where is the heart of God? The heart of God is in you. The heart of God is in me. First Peter 2, 9 to 10 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a royal nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous night, marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The righteousness of Christ has made all this possible toward a heavenly inheritance because he has paid it all on the cross to have you and me as his sole treasure both on earth and in heaven. For where the treasure of God is, that is where his heart is. That is you and I. The same Francis puts it in this song 330. Stanza 1 and stanza 5. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my hands and let them move The treasure of God. The treasure of God is you. The treasure of God is me or I. And that is where the heart of God is in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we stand for benediction? Our gracious Father in heaven. We have no language to explain your love toward us who had messed you instead of us, instead of you killing us and bringing up a new creation, you decided to go ahead and repair us, Lord. The only way you could have qualified to repair us was by sending your son, Jesus Christ, who, when it reached a determinant point to die or do, when he cried, Eloi, Eloi, lama sapakta, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? It was a deciding moment for humanity to be lost forever, all to be redeemed forever. And Heavenly Father, you allowed your son to die on the cross. Through that death, you qualified forever that the devil has no part to play anymore on your people. For you have redeemed us. You have made us your treasure. And that is where your heart is. Your heart is not in our cows. Your heart is not in our lands. Your heart is not in our houses. Your heart is not in our academic attainments. Your heart is not the status in the society. Your heart is in us because we are your treasure. Gracious Father, hold our feeble hands and walk with us along this spiritual journey as we navigate through it 
in preparation for that eternal home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.